Welcome to how to create an EVA requisition by entering a catalog item. After logging into EVA, click on the eMall Shop Now link from the left navigation. There are two ways to start a requisition. Click Create, then Requisition from the top menu, or click the Requisition link under Common Actions from the left navigation. Many of the fields are pre-populated for you. Your first step is to enter a title for your requisition. The On Behalf Of field will default to your name. Note, if you wish to create a requisition on behalf of another EVA user in your organization, you can select their name from the drop-down menu or use the search for more feature. However, please be aware they will be notified and inserted as an approver or watcher for the requisition. Also, their approval flow will be used for the requisition. Also, if you have set up your purchase card in EVA, you will see the Use P Card box along with the P Card alias. Uncheck the P Card box if you know the vendor does not accept them. The Agency and Fiscal Year fields will show default values associated with your user profile. Under the PO Category field, you'll be required to choose the type of requisition you are creating. For our example, we're creating a routine requisition, so you can simply key the appropriate R01 designation in the PO Category field. To see all available choices, click Select. For VITA and Scope Agencies, it's important for you to select the appropriate V PO category when purchasing technology that requires VITA approval. The 02 PO category is only used when purchasing from an unregistered vendor. For the procurement transaction type, enter the code or use the select link to choose the code that best describes the entire purchase. Click Next. Welcome to the Catalog section of EVA. From this screen, you can choose to add either a catalog or non-catalog item to your requisition or a mix of both. Note, vendors aren't required to create a catalog, so you will only see catalogs for vendors who have chosen to create one. Let's take a look around. There are numerous catalog categories. Note, the contract category is for informational purposes only. It's simply to let buyers know what items are on contract. Items under this category, which always show a zero for the price, should never be added to your cart. Also note, all punch-out catalogs can be found here. So if you know the vendor you want to purchase from has a punch-out, you can find them quickly like this. If you're not familiar with the term punch-out, let me explain. A punch-out catalog is a live, web-based catalog hosted by the vendor that links into EVA. It provides a virtual storefront to EVA buyers. This allows you to hop over and browse the vendor's site, shop and make selections,
then loop back into EVA to complete the order process. Here is your shopping cart showing number of items and total dollars. Note, if you add a non-catalog item and a punch-out item from the same vendor to your requisition, two separate orders will be created for that vendor. Now let's keep shopping. If you don't know from which vendor you want to purchase, you can search by keyword or by using one of these specific search fields. For our example, we're looking for colored pencils. The total number of items found is shown here. Here you can change the number of items you see per page. And here are options to sort your results. You can refine your search here. For our example, we're looking for only Demby certified small businesses. And we need wooden pencils. Your search path is shown here. To remove a filter, simply click on the previous category. You have the ability to compare items. Note, punch out items cannot be compared. You will know an item is available through a punch out catalog because it will have this icon and a buy from supplier button. To compare items, first click the checkbox next to the desired items, then click Compare. Here you can do a line-by-line -line comparison of your selected items. You can even add items from this screen to your cart. You can add multiple items to your cart by checking the box next to each item, entering the quantity, and then clicking Add to Cart. Or you can add a single item by entering the quantity, and then clicking Add to Cart. Once you have added all items to your requisition, click Next. Note, if you never need to add accounting details, you can bypass this next step and click Checkout instead. On the checkout screen, click Edit to open any fields where codes need to be entered. Here's a tip. If you need to add the same accounting codes to multiple line items, it's best to bypass this screen and do a mass edit on the checkout screen. Click Next to go to the checkout screen. Now it's time to review your requisition, make changes, add any comments or attachments, and submit your requisition for approval. Here's a tip. If at any point you would like to exit before submitting your requisition, you are able to save your work for later or delete the requisition altogether. Click the double arrow to expand the line items window to see all of your line items without having to scroll. Here you can edit, copy, and or delete an item. 
Note, you can also make the same changes to multiple line items at one time called a mass edit. Watch the lesson, How to Perform a Mass Edit, for steps on how to use this feature. Note, for punch-out items, you must edit the quantity at the vendor's site. Also, if you have multiple punch-out items on your requisition and would like to delete one of the items, you must make this change at the vendor's site. Select the desired line item, then click Edit. Update the quantity and click OK. Your changes should be immediately available for you to see. You can also quickly add items to your requisition here. Always add a need by date so the vendor will be informed as to when you expect to receive your order. Add any necessary comments and or attachments. Remember to click the checkbox to make them visible to the vendor if it's important they see these. Otherwise, your comments remain private notes you were making about the purchase, perhaps for your approver's benefit. Check mark as proprietary and confidential to indicate your comments and or attachments should be protected and not shared publicly. Note, you should only check both boxes when proprietary and confidential information is required to be on the order to the vendor. Lastly, check the approval flow to see if your name appears in the workflow. If your name is showing and you're not a typical approver, this means you need to approve your own requisition. Then manually print and fax the order to the vendor because they do not accept electronic orders. Listen for a tip toward the end of the lesson on how to find and print these types of orders. If you are satisfied with everything, click Submit. You will see your requisition has been submitted for approval. Click Home and you will be taken back to your eMall landing page. If needed, click Refresh Content. If you need to approve the requisition, it will appear in your to-do after all other designated approvers have approved it. You should see your requisition in your Requisitions Submitted section. Note, you should always see the submitted requisition in My Documents. If your requisition has no approvers, the status should display Ordering or Ordered. Here's a tip. Once a requisition is in Ordered status, you can find the order associated with that requisition by clicking the My Orders, My UPs tab. Find the desired order and click the ID to open it. A print button should display. Click the My Home tab to return to your email landing page. Thank you for watching How to Create an EVA Requisition by Entering a Catalog Item.